The Panhandle's newest state senator spent time this weekend meeting with his constituents. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, District 48 Senator Brian Hardin says he's pleased with the progression of the legislative session so far and credits Speaker John Arch for moving issues forward on the agenda. Hardin said while some lawmakers were upset with the idea of all-day committee hearings in the first part of the session to address difficult issues such as abortion rights, he said given the outcomes of prior sessions, the changes make sense. That's a paradox in thought and in leadership to say, handle as many of the big, thorny, difficult issues up front instead of at the end creating artificial anxiety. We're going to make better decisions. What that forced them was all day committee for two weeks. That's never been done before. The Gehring lawmaker said the work on the budget will still come at the end, as it always has, which will allow lawmakers to make better decisions as they concentrate on that at the end of the session. He made the comments Saturday at a brief town hall meeting in Scotch Bluff, one of two informal gatherings that included a stop in Kimball earlier in the day. Well, it's still no sale for the Scotch Bluff County building on 10th Street in Gehring that formerly housed the local DHHS offices, but there seems to be more interest in the property. Attorney Phil Kelly last week gave commissioners an update on the process, saying negotiations continue with the Gehring Library Foundation after their initial offer was rejected. They're still going through the process to talk with their, their supporters about what to do in the city of Gehring. Okay. Very good, thank you. And the building was shown to another group on Friday, and then I have a realtor from Colorado who's been trying to get people interested who called me today and asked if it had been sold, and I told them it had not. Well, thanks. I'm going to get Management accountant Lisa Ryan said the group that looked at the building at the end of last week was thinking of child care and it included two developers from Omaha along with representatives from Twin Cities Development and Gehring Public Schools. She says while that group looked at two other sites that would require development, they expressed an interest in potentially partnering with the Gehring Library if they could come to an agreement on how to share the former building. We'll have more news right after this. Swipe right, swipe left, endlessly searching. Finding the perfect match isn't always perfect, but it can be when it comes to finances. Nora found the perfect business loan. Jenny opened her first savings account. Grammy loves her checking account. We found a match for Wilson Farms. The Sandersons were matched with a mortgage. Regardless of your financial situation, Platte Valley Bank will match you with the perfect solution. Find your match at Platte Valley Bank. To sum up the past 20 years in one word, exceptional. It's one of our core values. But our people have been truly exceptional. Our customer support has been exceptional. In 20 years, where will Allo be? When we started, we were just a business fiber company. Then the demand came from residential. Now the products of both business and residential just continue to expand. We've got to start with customers' needs and always work backwards. The customers will tell us and our teammates will take us there. Welcome back. A 30-year-old Mitchell man has been arrested for fentanyl distribution. Dominic Torres made his initial appearance in Scottsbluff County Court on Friday, charged with two Class 1D felony counts of distribution of a controlled substance within 1,000 feet of a school or playground. Wing Drug Task Force investigators say that last June, he twice sold five blue pills marked with M30 on it to see eyes, and the pills from both controlled buys did test positive as fentanyl. The sales took place in the parking lot of an East Overland business less than 500 feet away from Roosevelt Elementary. Bond in the case was set at $100,000, 10%, and a hearing has been set for February 15th. Well, pretrial hearings have been set for a Scottsdale couple facing burglary and weapons charges following a December 26th domestic disturbance that left two people injured. 
Abel Garcia Sr. and his girlfriend, Kateri Spotted Eagle, are charged with burglary and use of a deadly weapon to commit a felony. Investigators say they found two people in the home bleeding, with Garcia Sr. putting the male victim in a headlock and then both assailants attacking a man and woman with knives. Spotted Eagle will be back in court in April for her pretrial hearing in district court, with Garcia Sr. back in court in May for his pretrial hearing. And U.S. Attorney Stephen Russell announced on Friday that Matthew Foster of Alliance was sentenced in federal court in Omaha for distribution of heroin and fentanyl analog. Senior U.S. District Judge John Gerard sentenced the 36-year-old to 180 months imprisonment plus a three-year term of supervised release. Investigation of an emergency response last February for an overdose victim in Alliance ultimately led to a controlled buy conducted by the Wing Drug Task Force that same month and a subsequent warrant search of Foster's residence that resulted in the seizure of blue fentanyl pills and heroin. The case was investigated by the Alliance Police Department and the Wing Drug Task Force. Culture trumps everything else. In my years, I've never worked for a company that treats people the way this one does. It is my passion for agriculture that brought me here in the first place, but not only that, there's a huge uh, family-oriented atmosphere within the 21st century equipment. I love working for 21st. They found something in me that I didn't know in myself. An intern to where I'm at now is such a great opportunity, and that is what this company is about. This is KNEB.TV Ag News from the FNBO Ag Desk. FNBO, the great big small bank. We're visiting now with Buck Warebine. He is the vice president of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association as we wrap up our coverage out here of this year's Cattle Industry Convention. Buck, first let me say congratulations on becoming vice president. Talk to us about uh, kind of the NCBA leadership and how you got to be in this position. Thank you. Well, I've been working in associations since... Uh, Texas cattle feeders uh, when we lived down there and then Nebraska cattlemen and uh, the Beef Council and now uh, NCBA and so uh, it's a, I have a desire to serve and I'm very pleased and proud and, and humbled that, that I've been chosen to do this and get into the officer chain. Where does that desire to serve come from? I think from my grandfather. He, he was that way and uh, encouraged me to be part of something larger than myself. And of course, you know, when you're in the cattle business, uh, you, you have passion about it. You love the animals, the people, and the, and the game, the cattle game. And so uh, to give back to what I consider to be a wonderful business is uh, something that I'd, I'd like to do and a willingness to serve and, and if, if people have confidence in me. You call Waterloo, Nebraska home. Tell me a little bit about your background in cattle production. Yeah, born and raised on a small farm in eastern Nebraska with cattle hogs and chickens. and and then we moved into town later and 
I uh, ended up going down to Texas where my father was and getting into the feedlot deal, the commercial feedlot deal. And, and so we were down there 20 years and this opportunity at Mead came up and uh, we, Sandy and I live now, a driver in a six iron from where we went to high school and we're back home and that, that, that's all been very good. I, I like to say the best thing I ever did was move to Texas and the best thing I ever did was move back. Well, let's make sure I get this part right. You are serving as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association Vice President this year. You'll step into President-elect and then eventually President here as uh, you ro go through the ranks. So I get that right? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. My congratulations to Buck Wehrbein. He joins us here as we wrap up our coverage of this year's Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. Are you looking for the perfect place to hold a wedding, family reunion, holiday office party, or business meeting? Well, look no further. The Hampton Inn and Suites Hotel and Conference Center is just the place for you. We're a full service banquet facility that can host up to 400 of your guests. Stop in and see our spacious open concept meeting rooms and begin planning your special event or family gathering today. Let us do the work for you so you can enjoy your guests. For personal service, stop by the Hampton Inn and Suites front desk. Let's take a look what's happening on today's community calendar. The Community Calendar is brought to you by Riverstone Bank. Community strong with the people you know and trust. Fly United Airlines operated by SkyWest with Western Nebraska Regional Airport. United is dedicated to going the extra mile for you with daily flights to and from Denver along with a commitment to excellent service. Reserve your flight today and remember United miles can be earned and redeemed with your flights. While at the airport, stop and enjoy authentic Italian food at Roma Italian Restaurant. Plus, Hertz Thrifty Car Rental is there for your car rental needs. Make life easier, relax, and get on board with Western Nebraska Regional Airport. At Platte Valley Bank, we want to help you plan for tomorrow while you enjoy today. Our personalized trust services can help you do just that. You've worked hard to build your legacy, and you want to make sure that gets passed on for generations to come. We offer the professional guidance necessary to ensure that happens. According to your wishes, we pride ourselves in being friendly and professional while offering a highly tailored full line of trust and estate planning services to accommodate you. You belong here. And finally tonight, more than 200 people were on hand this weekend for the Golden Halo Foundation's biggest annual fundraiser. Casino Night was held Saturday at the Hampton Inn and Suites in Scottsbluff, with guests spending the evening playing blackjack, poker, roulette, and craps. Only play money was used on those games, but real money was used for the numerous silent and live auction items that were up for bid over the course of the evening. Organizers and families involved with the foundation were also on hand, telling attendees first-hand accounts 
of how Golden Halo provides money to local families to help their children who have tremendous medical expenses for debilitating conditions. The event has averaged more than $10,000 in funds being raised since its inception. Well, that is it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. We'll see you here next time.